The thyroid gland derives its name from the thyroid cartilage. This is the thyroid cartilage. And so the thyroid gland is named after the thyroid cartilage. The thyroid cartilage resembles a shield. And that's why it was called the thyroid cartilage, because in Greek, thyros means shield. So the thyroid cartilage resembles a shield. And actually, in life, the thyroid cartilage can move over the cricoid cartilage, like the shield here can move. And this movement is brought about by the cricothyroid muscle. The gland is located close to the thyroid cartilage, and that's why it was called the thyroid gland. There are two lobes, and these two lobes are united in front of the trachea. Actually, in front of the second, third, and fourth tracheal rings, the two lobes of the thyroid gland are united by an isthmus, or a narrow part of thyroid tissue. Each lobe is spear shaped. It has a narrow upper pole and a broader lower pole. In some of the glands, about 50% of the glands, there is a pyramidal shaped extension upwards from the isthmus of the thyroid gland, and this is called the pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland. And sometimes it is connected to the hyoid bone is connected by a piece of fibrous tissue and in some cases this piece of fibrous tissue may also contain muscle fibers which is called levator glanduli thyroidi which means the elevator of the thyroid gland although this is not the main reason why the thyroid gland moves up with the swallowing it is not because of the presence or absence of this muscle but always the thyroid gland moves with the swallowing because it is contained within the pretracheal fascia that is attached to the um, larynx and the hyoid bone which move upward during swallowing. This is a thyroid scan that shows the, um, the two lobes of the thyroid connected by an isthmus here. This is a normal thyroid scan. The thyroid gland uh, lies in the anterior triangle of the neck and to be specific it lies in the muscular triangle of the neck under cover of these two muscles the sternohyoid and the sternothyroid uh, muscles. These are part of the strap muscles of the uh, neck we can see them here we can see this is a section of the neck a horizontal section of the neck here's the anterior side and this is the posterior side uh, under the skin of the neck there is the platysma muscle and this uh, red fascia here is the investing layer of deep cervical fascia which uh, forms a roof for the um, anterior as well as the posterior triangle of the neck Deep to the fascia, we can see uh, the strap muscles here. That is the sternohyoid. Deep to it, and a little bit lateral, is the sternothyroid uh, muscle. And deep to these muscles is the thyroid gland, surrounded by the pretracheal fascia. And you can see the close proximity here of the thyroid gland to both the trachea and the esophagus. And here, in the groove between the trachea and the esophagus is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is one recurrent laryngeal nerve and here is the other recurrent laryngeal nerve. The, uh, 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 here you can see the thyroid gland with its isthmus and it has a pyramidal lobe. The isthmus is related to the second, third and fourth trachea rings. The lower pole of the thyroid gland extends down to the level of the sixth tracheal ring. The upper pole of the thyroid gland extends up to the level of the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. And actually here, the sternothyroid muscle is attached and the upper pole cannot ascend up above the level of the uh, oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. Again, you can see this point emphasized here. That is the sternothyroid, deeper to this 
sternohyoid which has been cut and uh, in this diagram this is the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage where the sternothyroid is attached the upper pole of the thyroid gland is imprisoned here you can see that again in this coronal section this is the thyroid lamina of the thyroid uh, cartilage this is the cricoid and here is the upper pole of the thyroid gland imprisoned by the attachment of the sternothyroid muscle so the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage provides here the attachment of cricothyroid sternothyroid and in continuity with the sternothyroid is the thyrohyoid here we can see these muscles again this is the sternothyroid in continuity is the thyrohyoid and here this is the cricothyroid muscle all these are attached to the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage because of the close proximity of the thyroid gland you can see it again here in this section close proximity to the trachea and esophagus then enlargement of the thyroid gland we call goiter as you see in this picture enlarged thyroid gland this enlargement can compress on both or either of the trachea and esophagus compression of the trachea can uh, result in dyspnea compression of the esophagus can result in uh, dysphagia or difficulty in swallowing uh, you can see here in these x-rays where the thyroid gland is so large that it has been pushed into the superior mediastinum what we call retrosternal goiter it can push the trachea to the side you can see here these are the tracheal cartilages uh, they can be seen in this x-ray PA view because they are a little bit calcified so they are pushed off the midline and this is a retrosternal goiter that causes the deviation uh, to the side of the barium filled esophagus this is a barium swallow showing the esophagus it is off the midline because it has been pushed by the retrosternal goiter this is an axial MRI of the neck you can see this is the anterior aspect posterior aspect and we can see this relation of the gland to the trachea and esophagus and the carotid sheath as well so um, here is the subcutaneous tissue containing the anterior jugular veins these are the anterior jugular veins that's the thyroid gland the two lobes one lobe and the other lobe of the thyroid gland it is located in the anterior triangle and the anterior triangle is bounded on the sides by sternomastoid muscle on one side and the sternomastoid muscle on the other side so these are the sternomastoid muscles and this structure that is uh, flattened posteriorly is the trachea closely related to the thyroid gland behind the trachea is the esophagus and behind the esophagus of course is the uh, the bone the vertebral column this is a cervical vertebra body of a cervical vertebra and here is the spinal cord occupying the vertebral canal on the side of the trachea you can see this is the region of the carotid sheath and this is the other carotid sheath the carotid sheath contains the um, in this region it contains the common carotid artery and the external jugular vein the vein is located lateral to the artery common carotid and the internal jugular vein of course it also contains the vagus nerve but the vagus nerve is not uh, obvious in this uh, section again this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle and crossing superficial to the sternocleidomastoid the vessel here is the external jugular vein and behind or posterior to sternocleidomastoid the region here is the posterior triangle that is bounded posteriorly by the trapezius muscle the trapezius muscle is attached here posteriorly to the ligamentum nuchi this is again an ultrasound uh, 
showing a transverse section in the neck. Again, you can. This is the anterior side, and here is posterior aspect. Anteriorly, you can see that uh, this is the skin with the subcutaneous tissue and the platysma muscle. Then the pretracheal muscles, and then the thyroid gland, and related to the trachea. Uh, posterior lateral to the thyroid gland is the carotid sheath with the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein. In this view, the internal jugular vein is lateral to the artery. Uh, this is to show you the pretracheal fascia. Uh, it is the blue uh, fascia, the blue layer of fascia that is shown in both diagrams, in the sagittal section and in the transverse section. It is the blue layer of fascia. It surrounds the thyroid gland, is much denser in front than behind, very dense in front. And then that's why the enlarging thyroid gland tends to push backwards. It attaches the thyroid gland to the trachea, to the larynx, trachea, larynx, and to the hyoid bone. And for this reason, the thyroid gland moves upwards on swallowing, which is an important diagnostic feature for lumps in the neck. Also, this pretracheal fascia extends down into the superior mediastinum and uh, reaches the uh, level of the adventitia of the um, uh, arch of the aorta. And that's why a large goiter can also extend downwards uh, into the superior mediastinum, uh, producing uh, what we call a retrosternal goiter.